Coming up in the news, part look higher merchants say restrictions must be relaxed. The Abaco Chamber of Commerce appealing for an extension to tax breaks. And some good news from East Grand Bahama tonight. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, there is a call tonight for less restrictions in the business community. Merchants in one popular business district say, with little to no income from the tourism sector, restrictions are putting a strain on the economy. They say consideration must be given as they strive to keep their doors open and workers employed. This has been dubbed as Grand Bahama Shopping and Entertainment Mecca, but due to challenges such as Hurricane Dorian and now the COVID-19 pandemic, many businesses in the Port Lucayo marketplace remain closed. Now in recent times, Grand Bahama's numbers have been relatively low, but many business owners have made the decision to remain closed as protocols, regulations and rules continue to change. While these businesses within the Port Lucayo marketplace have made the decision to reopen once they were to do so. However, they say that the current restrictions are creating challenges and so far business is still up and down. For the situation we're in, we're holding on. It's up and down. You know, uh, slow through the week, busy, more traffic on the weekends. But we're just trying to keep steady, you know what I mean, right now. It's as good as it can get. It's been really quiet, obviously. Uh, there's not as many people coming out. It's hard to keep social distancing with big crowds. Um, we've made a few bucks like on the weekends and stuff, but we have to make sure to be closed down in time for lockdown. Business is as good as we're going to get for this kind of time. Representatives of these businesses say that this pandemic has given them a greater appreciation for the local market and the contribution they make to the local economy. As you know, it's a tourist area, but we haven't had the tourists in from Dorian, so we have to really thank all the local support that been coming through. So always invest in a home product, all right? It's nice to have the tourists, but I start to see that it's better at home. So we need our Bahamian clients to come and support us, and by that we be able to to stay open. So if we don't, uh, if we don't have the Bahamian clients. Because right now, you know, we're waiting on the tourist industry and we don't know when that's going to open up. But in the meanwhile, we need the Bahamian clients to come and shop with us. Now, Grand Bahama remains on a 10 p.m. curfew despite making progress in maintaining relatively low COVID numbers. These merchants are appealing for a more relaxed curfew. I think the curfew should be lifted till 12 because we've been on curfew from March. And, you know, and I think for the numbers, we're okay. We just hope and pray that we don't have an increase in cases. But for the numbers, we've been doing pretty good. We've been behaving and following all the protocols and, and uh, regulations. And I think we should, the curfew should be lifted until midnight. On a business level, we can only do what we can. You know, we don't want to break any rules. We have to make sure that we adhere to all the... Uh, um, rules in place to make sure that, you know, the business doors stay open. On a personal level, I don't leave home until 9 o'clock to go out. So, you know, coming out at 8 o'clock, for example, I get off at work from, let's say, 6, 7 o'clock. I'm not out until 8. That's only an hour to enjoy myself. So, you know, I think what they're doing right now is just trying to make sure that they flatten the curve as best as possible. Well, I really like the Prime Minister to lift the curfew because Freeport is in like Nassau. So much people not to put Nassau out there like that, but you know, during the day, everybody works when they get off. They would like to come out to have a drink, something to eat, but the time is very limited. So if the prime minister could hear me, well, he can lift the curfew so we can get the night shift back or extend it to later hours. would be greatly appreciated. And as of November 1st, the quarantine requirements to enter the country will be waived. While many are hoping this move attracts more tourists, these business owners are doubtful. The tourists... Wait, what hotels? You know, hotels on the island? Nah, I don't think we're going to see no increase right now. Everybody's getting ready to go on their lockdown again. The U.S., Europe, they're getting ready to go lockdown. Most of the, some states in the U.S. are already on lockdown, so I don't think we're going to see no increase of tourists right now. And no cruise ships. 
Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line announcing a voluntary extension to the resumption of its sailing operations. The cruise line will resume cruise operations to Grand Bahama Island on December 18, 2020 on board the Grand Classica and will announce details on its return to Nassau at a later date. In an official statement, CEO O'Neill Kosa says they are pleased with the decision of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to lift its no-sale order on October 31, 2020, adding that the past few months have been an incredible challenge for the cruise industry. The CEO noting that while they are eager to return to sea, the overall health and safety of guests and crew maintain remain top priority. Instead of returning to Grand Bahama Island on board Grand Celebration, the company has decided to return on board Grand Classica, which features larger deck space and nearly 100 fewer staterooms. COSA says they will continue to work closely with the CDC, the World Health Organization, and the Bahamian government as they prepare to return to Grand Bahama, and they appreciate the support and patience of their partners and crew during this challenging time. One year after Hurricane Dorian, the leader of the Abaco business community says that island is far from where it should be. That is why he is appealing to the government to continue to offer tax breaks to that island, saying the survival of the business sector depends on it. Jamila Mizik reports. Abaco Chamber of Commerce President Ken Hutton is calling for the further extension of tax breaks given to residents on Abaco and Grants Bahama due to Hurricane Dorian. He says the imposition of the concessions was incredibly helpful in the very beginning, but once COVID-19 hit and the world economy shut down and the Bahamas closed its borders, it was virtually impossible for a lot of residents to take advantage of the concessions to rebuild. And that's basically what's been happening for the past you know, six, seven, eight months since the lockdowns happened. There was a lot of people that wanted to come back and start rebuilding that uh, were not able to do that before, say, March, because they were still dealing with insurance claims. And then uh, once they got the insurance claims, they couldn't come back. So we think that, you know, rather than it, uh, you know, just ending them in December, I think that's going to cause tremendous hardship and on our ability to rebuild as, as quickly as possible. The chamber president says he has spoken to Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, about the situation and says he has been very receptive in their discussions. He hasn't committed to anything yet, but the uh, discussions continue and, um, and I'm hopeful that uh, we're going to come to some sort of uh, resolution that will, uh, you know, that will help the government because, you know, we do understand the fiscal situation of the country right now. Um, but we also understand that, you know, we need to get through this uh, rebuilding process as quickly as possible so that we can really, you know, get Abaco econ Abaco's economy, um, you know, rolling as quickly as possible. And I think this is the best mechanism to do that. Hutton says there's no disputing that they've lost a minimum of seven to eight months due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which further stresses the need for the extension. I think that we need to look at something not only to encourage people to come back and rebuild, but also to encourage additional development. And I think that the, uh, the special economic zone concessions were ideal for that. So, I, I mean, ideally, we're looking at two years. But that is, you know, targeted. We're not looking for... Um, you know, a blanket duty and VAT free special economic zone concessions to continue as they sit now. We are we, we are cognizant of the issues and, you know, we're looking at sort of targeted concessions going forward. And he contends that while the extension is important, the reopening of the borders is paramount at this time. We need to get this economy. We need to get our borders back open. We need to get the development and the reconstruction really um, started in earnest. That's what will make the difference. Concessions are meaningless unless they can be used. Jamila Mizek, ZNS Network News. We contacted the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Kate Peter Turnquest, for a comment on the appeal made by the Abaco Chamber of Commerce. So the current law um, ex uh, extends the concession for vehicles through December 31st, 2020. 
uh, we felt that there was sufficient time for persons to have uh, replaced their vehicles, uh, given that most of them would have been covered by insurance. The, we uh, extended the provisions for bad and duty tree on construction materials and services to June 30th of 2021, which coincides with the annual fiscal year end. But he says they will revisit the issue of extension if necessary. When we get to June uh, and we start designing the 2021-2022 budget, uh, of course we will look at the circumstances again. Uh, we appreciate that COVID may have delayed some people in their um, rebuilding efforts, uh, we will look at it and we will make an assessment at a time whether we believe that there is still uh, a need for us to uh, provide that level of uh, uh, concession. Bear in mind that we are suffering through a very significant economic downturn uh, and that is having a direct effect on the government's own revenues. Some good news from East Grand Bahama. The oil that was dumped illegally in that community, along with the contaminated soil, have been removed. However, investigations are continuing into the matter. The Deputy Prime Minister and Member of Parliament for the area relieved that the area has been cleaned up. So, uh, the, yes, the police are in fact still investigating that matter. Uh, they have been able to rule out a couple of um, um, they have not uh, established any um, substantial leads at this point uh, based on the information that I have um, and I've been updated this afternoon. Um, so we do uh, ask the public uh, that if they are aware of who may have uh, done this dastardly deed, uh, that they contact the Northeastern Division of the Police Force or any of the police stations and share that information so that we can find these culprits uh, and bring them before the courts. The environmental hazard was discovered by a passerby yesterday morning. But as for how long the oil was there, well, that has not yet been determined. The area MP says it is too early to say if the water table was impacted. Um, I have not had that report yet, and so I, I can't really speak to that. Um, uh, I, 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 I'd love to defer at the moment, but I, but I do know that sanitation is uh, remediating, remediating the area, uh, and they are not only just taking the oil, but they're actually taking up the contaminated soil. So they will, they will go as deep as they need to to ensure that they uh, take uh, any, any surface uh, material um, and, and do the best they can to ensure that there's limited uh, leaching in the ground. In other news, schools throughout the country making adjustments as they attempt to balance the process of education in a COVID-19 environment. Here on Grand Bahama, some schools have had to make some changes to ensure a smooth transition. Tabernacle Baptist Academy among them. Jamila Mizik has the story. To ensure that students are safe while learning, Tabernacle Baptist Christian Academy has implemented the necessary health and safety protocols. Assistant Administrator Norris Bain says, as early as 7.15 a.m. when students arrive on campus, every person is required to have their temperature checked. He adds that there are several hand sanitizing stations on the campus, among other added measures. We have changed the way we do our breaks and lunch. Um, we only allow two students per grade level to come to the tuck shop. They take the order for all of the students in their grade and the students are seated and then those students will pass the uh, lunches out uh, to the other students in the class. Of course, they have to sanitize and everything once they're done doing that and then once they're done eating, they go and they sanitize again. Bain says they've been stressing to the students the importance of social distancing and mask wearing. Their children, you have to constantly be telling them, don't do it. Uh, you have to constantly be telling them everybody must wear their face mask at school. You must wear your face mask. You must social distance. And they're children, so we have to do it all day. 
as long as they're on the campus, we're telling students, keep your mask on, in class, out of class, cover your nose, cover your mouth. And so those are the things that are happening around here every day. He says they've also implemented staggered dismissals. We have gone to where we dismiss pre and primary at two o'clock. We dismiss all seven graders at 2.45 and at 3.05 we dismiss the rest of the school just to cut down one on the amount of traffic, secondly the count the cut down on the amount of students uh, that are in the on the campus and to minimize children after all be uh, being together around school. We've cut down on we've really cut down on, on, on that and trying to make sure that everybody is safe. However, Bain notes that parents must be responsible and pay attention to official correspondence from the school. We do have some responsible parents who will call and say if they see any signs of, of any of the symptoms, man, it could just be a common flu, but any signs, some of the, our responsible parents will call the school and say, I'm not letting my child come to school for a couple of days. The school has, has even gone a step further. We know of the large social gathering that parents love to have. And we have warned them, if we hear that your child was at a party, a birthday party, we are going to ask you to keep your child home for 14 days. Just sort of for precautionary method, so that you would learn that we are taking this serious. I'm at risk, you at risk, everybody's at risk when we do not behave responsibly. Jamila Mizek, ZNS Network News. Hey everyone, Shaquille Hanna, Young Rev here. Uh, listen, I just want to bring this quick word of encouragement for you. Uh, my son uh, has this basketball hoop that he plays with at home. And uh, unfortunately for him, uh, his ball got a bit deflated, you know, just because of, I guess, over a period of time. And, you know, as he tries to play with the ball because it's deflated, you know how that is. You bounce it, it doesn't really bounce back like how you would like it to. And that is really not much fun, right? But here's the thing. Um, just as I was about to put uh, some air in this ball of him, I got this revelation. Is that really and truly that there's really nothing wrong with the ball. Right now, a lot of people in our country are feeling deflated. And a lot of people in our country are feeling uh, hopeless. Right now, we know that a lot of people are jobless. Um, kids can go to school, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's a really deflating situation, if we would put it like that. But the issue itself is not really with the ball. It's what's on the inside of the ball. Because the thing is, as soon as I'm putting, as soon as I put air in this ball, it now has the ability to bounce back. It now has the ability to do what it's supposed to do against a very hard surface. And I want to tell you, um, as a simple word of encouragement, the way to make it through this season is to make sure that you're getting the right stuff on the inside of you, because no matter how hard the times may be, no matter the situations you may find yourself in, no matter what you may see happening around you, no matter what's happening nationally, if you get the right stuff on the inside, when you hit the hard surface of life, you will have the ability to bounce back. He has a junk canoe in his blood and he is our everyday hero tonight. That story and more when we come back.